Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch. Today we are checking out Material Maker. Now, Material Maker is a texture generation software. It is completely free, uses a procedural workflow to create various different texture maps that you can use in your game engine, your content creation tool, whatever. And the cool thing is it's actually built on top of the Godot game engine. Oh, and as I mentioned earlier on, it is also completely free, which is, I guess, always pretty nice. However, if this is sounding a little familiar to you, that's because I actually already covered Material Maker in the past. Uh, back as short as October the 15th, I actually covered this guy. So only about three or four months ago. And the kicker is when I covered this, it was version 0.5. And today we're up to 0.8. And there's a ton of new functionality in there. So we're going to look a quick look at what Material Maker is all about again. Again, I'm not going to go into a huge amount of depth because I've already done this, to be honest. But if you guys are wondering what this is all about, that's what we're going to cover now or jump forward a little bit in the video and I will show you what is new in 0.8. So first off, what is Material Maker? Well, like I mentioned earlier on, it is a procedural texture generator. It is built using the Godot game engine. That's why some of the UI is going to look a little familiar to you if you are from a Godot background. And you see here your ultimate output node is a material. So you've got a number of different input channels, things like an albedo channel, a metallic channel, a roughness channel, emissions, normal, ambient occlusion, depth, subsurface scattering. And this is not an input obviously but you can also set the size of the materials that are outputted and then when you're done with it you can go ahead you can save your material out and you can export and get all of the various different maps that are generated by this process and it's pretty straightforward in how it works what you do is you start with basic primitives or shapes or whatever and you start bringing them in so if I want to bring a rune based uh, network of nodes you see down here we got a four by four of runes this guy the, the 2d preview now tiles you'll notice here uh, we can basically just drag that out drop that into the color channel or the albedo channel and then boom our guy if we switch over to preview 3d there you can see the end results now in this 3d preview by the way you can switch the environmental background so if we wanted to, we could switch to like studio lighting. I'm going to go with the, the forest default though. That's just your environment lighting map. Same thing is if you want to see your results, you can click this little cube down here and you can see it right there. You can also click this little guy up here to see kind of a hierarchy that went together to create this guy. This is a very simple shader. So uh, I'll, I'll show you in an, a more complicated one in just a second. So pretty straightforward and clean so far. Now let's say we wanted to mix some bricks and our things together. We could do that and come on in here, go to a bricks thing. We got several different kinds of bricks we can work from like uh, herring bone or basket weave or whatever I'm just gonna do standard straight old bricks um, and now we could drop the bricks straight into the albedo channel and there you see the end result there now that probably those are not very convincing bricks because normally bricks aren't white so let's gonna go ahead and we're gonna do a colorize you can filter up here so we'll drop in a colorize node um, so let's drop it in colorize right here so boom so we now have our colorize We'll drop into it instead and drop out of it into our elbow channel right here. And now we can set the fields. So go here and we'll set the primary color. Actually, I'm fine with black for the secondary color. Let's go ahead and make that like a red. There you go. So we got slightly more bricky bricks. Now we've also got control. Obviously, you can see down here over how of our bricks were generated, uh, how many rows and columns of bricks to have, how large to make the mortar and the beveling. We can now round off the corners. That's one of the new features of this release. So for example, I can come in here and set this to say 0 0.3 and our bricks are now roundy. Um, we can pick the mortar size. So let's do 0 0.01. Like so we can now got a much thinner mortar. Um, the mortar etc so that's how you can kind of bring these things together now finally let's go up here we'll drop in a mix and we'll do a mix map drop our mix map in here bring this first map in there so our runes are going to come back our second map is oh no i want to keep our colorization so let's bring this guy up here we'll instead of pinning out to there we'll pin into our mix and then we'll replace the albedo channel with this guy. And there you see, we now have runey bricks that are red going on here. And you can do the same thing. So we could we could go ahead and make our, um, we go back to our bricks. We could make this guy again. I don't know if I can, yeah, I can. Okay. So I just did a copy and a paste. So now we have our bricks again. I'm gonna come up here, search for another type of uh, node. In this particular case, I want normal map. So we're gonna create a normal map from our input source. We'll drop this guy in here. Drop it there. We can preview the results by clicking this little eyeball. So there is our normal map. Drop our normal map into the normal channel. 
like so. Now, you may have noticed a quick edit there. For some reason, this pin is being very finicky, so now I can't actually disconnect it, and I'm not sure what's going on, but you get the idea of how this whole thing works. Um, so, yeah, that is the basic process. Now, one of the things that's happened is a number of new nodes have been uh, added in, and we've also got uh, improvements to the workflow. These new nodes are allowing us to do some really cool 3D effects. So let me just go ahead and show you one of the new examples. So we have a, uh, let's see, the, where did it go? Skulls. So this is a very much more advanced graph going on here. Uh, there you go. So you see there is more of a 3D effect in, a, in, in action here. And this is using the new ray marching node and some of the new functionality that was added behind the scenes. Now, where did ray marching go? I'm sure it's in here somewhere. Da, 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 there it is. So this is the new magic node going on there, and that is giving us the cool 3D effect we're seeing here. We also got a number of new uh, workflow-based nodes, uh, and, and now we're on the topic of actual um, new and improved. Let's head on back over to the Material Maker website. I'm actually not back over to it. I haven't been there yet. Uh, but here it is, uh, and this is what is new. So this is Material Maker 0 0.8. Um, and we head on down here, we're going to see some of the new stuff going on. I will, of course, link this in the linked article down below. As I mentioned earlier on, it is entirely free. It is donation-based. So if you want to support the author, uh, kick him a couple of bucks. It's available over on itch.io. Uh, we've got a couple of changes first. So a regression, bad news always first. 2D SDF nodes do not output grayscale information and cannot be directly connected to a grayscale color RGB input anymore. You'll have to make the uh, have to use the SD show node. Now, this is going to make sense in just a second. All right, so we've got for improvements. Uh, user interface 2D. 2D and 3D previews are now in separate tabs, which is definitely a nice improvement. So if you are looking at a selected node here, so I'll grab the repeat node, we can see that in the preview and we see just the individual node we have selected, the 2D preview of it. And 3D is a separate beast altogether, although there seems to be some weird artifacting going on there, but neither here nor there. Uh, 3D preview in the background of the node can now be shown using that cube button. Showed you that earlier on, so we can turn it off and on that way. Uh, let's see, go on back over here. 2D preview now shows a tiled version of the selected node, so you can see the results are seamless or not. Uh, 2D preview now has control that can be um, associated to float node parameters. This applies mainly to shape transform nodes. UI will now be dimmed when exiting the application. Okay, uh, and then so we got uh, in getting into the nodes, new nodes and code generation stuff. By the way, you can actually create your own code generators. Mostly, it's just straightforward um, GD uh, shader scripting and a couple of configuration files that are in the install directory. So if you want to learn more about that, they are available in here. So if you go into generators, they're all pretty straightforward, just text files. So for example, warp node, open that up in your code editor. You can see it's a pretty straightforward. So you got some parameters being passed out to tell uh, you know how it to connect it or the pins to connect it uh, but otherwise it's uh, pretty straightforward and there you're seeing some of the logic behind it so if you want to dig in and see how these things are created it's they're all there straight text pretty easy to learn from so Okay, back to the new nodes and code generation. Two new types of nodes input outputs have been added for 2D and 3D signed distance functions. Uh, both types has a custom preview, uh, distance field for 2D SDF and shaded scene for 3D SDF. Um, shader nodes inputs now have a function attribute. When this option is selected, the input is generated as a function is usable um, in instance functions. This feature made all of the 3D SDF nodes possible. A few problems in convolution nodes were fixed. So the new and improved nodes, we have all 2D sign distance functions have been modified to use the 2D SDF input and output. Um, the SD show node is now the only way to generate an image, uh, added 2D SD tra SDF transform and morph nodes. Uh, new 3D, uh, 3D sign distance functions node can be used to, to describe 3D shapes, many shapes, sphere, box, capsule, torus, cylinder, transforms, operators, operators are provided and the render nodes can be used to generate a height map and a normal map from the 3D uh, SDF information. All this is based on ray march. It can be used to demonstrate 3D objects that can be spread on the texture. And we got two examples to showcase this one. The skulls one I showed you, there's also a pile of bricks example and it's actually kind of a cool example as well. So you can see these new uh, functions in action. So let's go ahead and show that one. It's a pile of bricks available right here. And let's see the result. So you can see the the uh, again, this is all being done with ray marching, but it's giving us normal maps that are generated using that new functionality that was added in, giving you that nice 3D effect. Um, 
So the new 3D box and sphere nodes are not based on 3D SDF and just output a height map. New workflow nodes can be used to define base materials and mix them using height orientation offset maps and to ultimately create complex materials without drawing spaghetti monsters in the graph view. A few uh, simple base materials are provided in the node library as templates, new marble and updated medieval wall show you these nodes in action. So let's show you right here. So load, let's go down and show you the Medieval wall. So you can see this is actually a pretty complicated selection of things going on here. Um, a nice thing, it is commented so you can learn how these things were created. But you can see it's a pretty complicated material being generated there uh, using the new workflow stuff. And the workflow stuff is available here. And I think some of the new miscellaneous stuff as well is what's being used. Um, so that's really kind of cool improvements. Brick node has improvements. I think I showed you some of these earlier in the video. Uh, custom UV node uh, uses one of its inputs as coordinates to read the other input and thus can be used to implement psychedelic image transforms. New generic truchet, truchet? I don't know what that word is, to be honest. Uh, node tiles, it's input, randomly flipping it horizontally, vertically, or both. Uh, the beehive node just outputs hexagonal tiles. The new convolution Convolution nodes are three edge detectors and a sharpen filter. Uh, new normal map node has a new option to disable its input buffer. New grayscale node converts color input to grayscale with a choice of five algorithms. And the new swap channel nodes replaces all channels RGBA of its output with zero, one, or an optionally inverted channel of its output input. And as I mentioned earlier on, available for download right here. You can download it for Windows and Linux. I assume that you could do a Mac build seeing as this is a Godot-based product, but the binaries are available for um, Windows and Linux at this point in time. Definitely a cool project and one I recommend you check out. If you do decide to check it out, you'll find actually there is quite solid uh, documentation that is installed. So once you've got it installed, there's a full manual that walks through everything that you need to know to get started and going. It is available, help user manual. Like I said, it is a local HTML file that is installed. Most of the nodes are well-defined and um, the workflow stuff, it's all current. So you can see how they went ahead and built that medieval wall, for example. So the documentation is kept current with every release. And when they add new functionality, they add documentation to go with it. And documentation is a wonderful thing. All right, so that is it. That is Material Maker up to version 0 0.8. I don't cover every single version that happens with things, but if you watch the 0 0.5 video to this one, you'll notice there is quite a bit of new functionality in this guy and it's another one of those like great free tools and i'm kind of amazed by how spoiled we are in this world today so let me know what you think of that comments down below and i will talk to you all later goodbye